ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وشر العمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اما بعد the times my brothers and sisters in which we are living no doubt they are times of turmoil there are times of fitan and tribulation wherein the muslims are being killed uprooted exiled they are divided in their ranks they are separated and split so much so that the likes of our sheikh the allama rabi' bin hadi al madkhali said that if one was to cry and weep over the state of the ummah right now and die because of it because of those tears and because of that grief then it would not be a surprise it would not be something that is ajeeb due to the fact my brothers and sisters that we are living in times that are weighty and difficult and hard The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that there will not come a time upon my ummah except that the time that comes after it is more evil than the time that came before it up until you meet your Lord. The great scholar Shaykh Al-Albani rahimahullahu ta'ala in volume 1 of his silsila al silsilatul hadith sahiha he mentions in volume 1 right at the very beginning in which he entitles al mustaqbal lil islam he mentions that the future it is for islam in the introduction he mentions this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that a time will not come except that the time that comes after it is more evil and more wicked than it up until you meet your lord he mentions that this is not ala al itlaq this is not something that is unrestricted rather it is possible from time to time and generation to generation for a time to be better than the time that came before it even though in general as the as the generations go by up until we meet our lord the times will get difficult and harder and more evil and there will be more turmoil and there will be more fitan but there may be there may be in between those eras a time when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives blessings because of the goodness of the people because of the khair that they are upon because of them being upon istiqama that allah gives them khair An example from those examples that Ahlul Ilm they mention is the era of Sheikh Al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. 
Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, Shaykh al-Islam, the mujaddid, the imam of his era, the time that came before him, the people had turned to the worship of the graves and trees, sacrificing in front of caves wherein the jinn used to dwell. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised this imam and those who were with him from Ahlul Ilm, the a'imma of his time, those whom he taught, those whom he cultivated, returning them back to the tawheed that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. And because there was a body of individuals who were seeking the truth, desiring the truth, wanting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking nothing except the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they heard the message of Shaykh al-Islam. And they answered the call. And they entered into Tawheed. And they stuck to the sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah gave them victory. And the whole of the Arabian Peninsula that was drowned in darkness, worshipping graves and worshipping the inhabitants of the grave, the Quburiyin, people who had been drowned in Sufiya and Quburiya, from the various turuq of Sufiya, that they abandoned all of that because they heard the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon the tongue of this imam and the students of this imam, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala. In that time, that time was better than the time that came before it. And it remained upon khair for a generation or two generations. And the rulers of that time Muhammad bin Saud, rahimahullah ta'ala, the imam, who took on this tawheed, established tawheed in the jazeera. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him and blessed the people. And Allah elevated them in rank. And their da'wah continues up until this day that we live in now. But in general, as we have noticed and as we have seen and as we see in front of our eyes today, the times in general are getting worse. The Muslims are in turmoil. Just as Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that there is coming upon you a time when the nations will gather upon you. The nations will come meaning Ahlul Kufr and the people of Shirk and the enemies of Islam that they will gather upon you that time is coming, the Prophet ﷺ said, that they will take from the Muslims and from the nations or the Muslim nation just as a guest takes from the food that is served in front of him. Just as the guest they come and they eat from the food, they will take from the Muslims like that. Because they will have no concern, they will have no fear of, his, of the Muslimin. As the Prophet ﷺ continued to say in the same narration, so the companions, they said, being surprised at the fact that after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them what he had given them, as Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, radiyallahu anhuma, he said in that famous hadith reported and collected by Imam Muslim in his sahih, he said to the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya Rasulallah, kunna fi jahiliyatin wa sharrin. He said, O oh, messenger of Allah, we were living in jahiliya and in wicked times. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us this khair. And that khair, these companions, they saw it. They saw the beauty of Islam. They saw what Islam did to them. How it changed their lives. The Arabs that were fighting each other and killing each other. That they became brothers one to another. فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا as Allah has stated, and by the grace of Allah, from the grace of your Lord that you became brothers one to another. So when Hudayfa said what he said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah brought us this khair. So now when the messenger said that the nations are about to gather upon you, they will gather upon you just like the guests they gather upon the plate of food that is served or the platter of food that is served. By the host. They were surprised and shocked. They said, Ya Rasulullah, 
Is it because we will be few in number upon that day? He said, no, no rather you will be great in number, but you will be like the scum on top of the flood water. So when that time comes, and the Muslims, they are in a state of weakness, that Allah's Messenger of Allah وسلم, said that Allah takes the fear out of the hearts of the enemy and throws a wahan into your hearts, throws a weakness into your hearts. They said, Ya Rasulullah, what is that weakness? Love of this life and fear of death. So when that time comes and the Muslims, they are weak, then that is the time, my brothers and sisters, to look and to ponder and to reflect upon that which has led the Muslims into the calamities that they are in. And Shaykh Al-Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, not only him, but him, particularly in our times, that he's constant in his writings, constant in his khutub, constant in his durus, when he's asked about this affair. Why are the Muslims in calamity? Why are the Muslims suffering? And look at the answer that he continually gives. He said, because they have become distant from at tawheed They have become distant from the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are far removed from the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they are drowned in bid'ah. So they said to the shaykh, oh shaykh, do you not see that the Muslims are being killed? He said, ya akhi, the Muslims are being killed because they have left tawheed. Look at the answer of the alim. And look at the answer of the siyasi hizbi. The siyasi hizbi will look at the, pol- at the politics of the world and the conspiracies of the Jews and the conspiracies of the Christians. But the Salafi alim, he says, Ya Akhi, this humiliation is from Allah. Because you have become distant from the tawheed of Allah, from the worship of Allah, from the ibadah of Allah. So Allah has removed the, the fear from the heart of your enemy. And Allah has thrown a weakness into your heart. This is the issue. Love of this life and fear of death. Don't want to meet Allah. Because we are so pleased. And we are so happy with what this dunya has given us. Of wealth and decoration and beauty. So much so that the decoration of this dunya. And the beauty of this dunya has taken us away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even when a calamity befalls, we don't look towards Allah. We don't look towards the deen. We look towards the very same dunya that has has amazed us. Even for the solutions, we look towards the dunya. Whereas the ulama, upon the guidance of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they command that the Muslims look at themselves. So Shaykh Al-Albani quite rightly said, when he gave the chapter heading in Silsila Volume 1, Al-Mustaqbal Lil-Islam. That the future, it is for Islam. And he mentions straight away, straight under the chapter heading, he mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that it is Allah, it is He, the Most High, who has sent His Messenger with the guidance, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the guidance, وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ and with the true religion, so that it becomes manifest over all of the other religions, even if the mushrikeen, even if they hate that. Because this now, straight away when we read that word, when we read those words of Allah, look at the manhaj of Shaykh al-Almani, rahimahullah. He's saying to you, don't despair. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that He is the one who has sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the guidance. Ilmu nafi' as Shaykh al-Islam said. That he has sent him with the guidance, with the beneficial knowledge from Allah. And he has sent him with the true religion. 
with the righteous deeds. Beneficial knowledge that is acted upon with righteous deeds. So that it may become manifest over all of the other adyan. This is Islam. Then he mentions, Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah, that this noble ayah gives us the glad tidings that the future indeed is for Islam. By way of domination, ascendancy, its manifestation, and its overcoming all of the other religions. This is the nature of Islam, the beauty of Islam. When a person looks at Islam, my brothers and sisters, and what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with, not only Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, but all of the Anbiya and the Rusul before him, Isa, Jesus, and Yahya, and before them the likes of Musa, and Harun, and Ismail, and Ishaq, and Yusuf, and Ibrahim, and those who came before them, and those who came after them from the prophets and the messengers. That when the people look at what they brought, guidance from Allah, Something, my brothers and sisters, that removes the constrictions from the heart. The tightness of the heart, the restrictions of the heart. Enslavement of man to man. That Islam takes and those prophets and messengers, what they came with, took the people away from that. And brought them to the vastness of Islam. The vastness of this life and the vastness of the hereafter. Because now servitude is not to other men. Servitude is to Allah. Devotion is to Allah. Ibadah is to Allah. This is the beauty of Islam, what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. So why shouldn't it be, why should it not be manifest over all of the other religions? If this is what Islam is. Problem. That people come along and they taint that beauty. They cloud that beauty and they veil it. So the one who is seeking the truth, all he sees is this veiled, cloudy version of Islam. That is not clear. Because Ahlul Bid'a and the du'at ila, ala, uh, du'at ala abwabi jahannam and the callers who are standing at the gates of the hellfire that they deceive and they corrupt and they change and they disfigure Islam and the beauty of Islam. As Shaykh al-Albani himself rahimahullah ta'ala said that the beauty of Islam is disfigured by those people. Islam is beautiful. What Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with is perfection and beauty. That if the people looked at it with a sincere heart, that they would enter into it, as they did in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some people think, Shaykh al-Albani said, that this establishment of Islam, that it becomes manifest over all of the other adyan, all of the other religions, that this took place during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And during the era of the Khulafa al-Rashidin, and during the era of those pious kings, the likes of Muawiyah, and other than Muawiyah, the likes of Umar bin Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala, and other than them. He said, rather, this is not correct. That which was realized in the era, in the era of Muhammad and that era after him, was only a portion of this promise. That Islam, that it will become manifest over all of the other religions. He said, and this is something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alluded to in his statement that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that the days and nights will not pass up until Allah and Al-Uzza are once again worshipped. Meaning that before the hour is established, those idols that were destroyed by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he commanded that they be destroyed so that only Allah is worshipped. He said that a day will come before Yawm Al-Qiyamah that Allah and Al-Uzza, the idols of Quraysh, will again be resurrected and worshipped. So Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, I always thought that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed his words, Huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al-haq. لِيُذْهِرَهُ عَلَى دِينِ كُلِّهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ That I thought that when Allah revealed this verse, that it is Allah who has sent His Messenger with the, with the, true, with, with the guidance and the true religion, so that it may become manifest over all of the other religions, even though the idol worshippers may hate that. 
I thought that by the, by the revelation of this ayah, Aisha said, radiyallahu anha, that it was completed. That this was now established and accomplished. Meaning the Islam has become manifest. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, they will occur from that ayah, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. So there are other hadith Shaykh al-Albani mentions after this hadith that clarify the extent of the manifestation of Islam and the extent of its, of its spreading so that there remains no doubt that indeed the future is for Islam. By Allah's permission and Allah's tawfiq, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting success, we know my brothers and sisters that the future is for Islam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala continued by saying, he said, so now I will mention that which is easy from the narrations for you to understand. So that they may become a reason for honing in and strengthening the enthusiasm and the resolve of those who work for Islam, meaning the du'at and the callers to Allah. And the proof against those who despair. So then he mentions that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathered up for me the earth. And I saw its east and I saw its west. And indeed the sovereignty of my ummah will reach the extent of that which was gathered for me. Then Shaykh al-Albani mentions, and what is even clearer than that is the following hadith. That this affair, meaning al-Islam, will reach whatever is reached by the night and the day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave a dwelling, neither of mud nor of fur, except that Allah will enter into that dwelling, this deen. Bringing honor to those who deserve the honor. Bringing honor to the honorable and humiliation to those who are wretched. Honor that Allah gives with Islam, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and humiliation that comes with unbelief. And concerning that, Shaykh al-Albani continues, and concerning that, which there is no doubt, is that to actualize the spread of Islam necessitates that the Muslims having to return back to strength both in spirituality and materially speaking, even militarily, even in terms of their military strength, so that they may overcome the strength of unbelief and transgression. And this tiding, this glad tiding from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is mentioned in another narration. And he mentions the narration that has been collected by Imam Ahmed and ad darami and Ibn Abi Shayba in his Musannaf with the, with the Isnad that is Hassan. He mentioned that Abu Qabil said that we were with Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. Radiyallahu anhuma. And one of the narrations mentions that they were with him in Cyprus. When the Muslims had conquered Cyprus. And we asked him, which of the two cities would be conquered first? Constantinople or Rome? So Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhuma, he called for his sunduq, meaning called for his chest. And then he, he opened the chest and he pulled out of it a book. And then he opened the book and he read from the book. Shaykh al-Albani said that this in it of itself is a proof that the sahaba radiallahu anhum used to sit with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and write down his words and preserve those words and they would refer back to those words in written form. He mentions that Abdullah ibn Amr, he said, that we were in the, that we, he read from his book and he said, we were in the company of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa writing. 
when the messenger of Allah was asked, which of the two cities will be conquered first? Constantinople or Rome? So Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa replied, the city of Heraclius will be conquered first, meaning Constantinople. That Constantinople will be conquered first. So Sheikh al-Mani said, look at this. This conquest took place at the hands of Muhammad ibn al-Fatih al-Uthmani. As it is well known, and that was 800 years after the revelation of this hadith. 800 years after the death of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa That Constantinople was conquered. The Muslims don't despair. The Messenger told them. 800 years before the conquest of Constantinople. That indeed the Muslims will conquer Constantinople first. And it happened 800 years after the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what does that necessitate, my brothers and sisters? Like Sheikh al-Albani said, it necessitates sabr, patience, persevering, not giving up, continuing upon the methodology of tasfiyah and tarbiyah. And that's why when they ask Sheikh al-Albani, rahimahullah, for how long are we going to have to do what you are saying? Tasfiyah, tarbiyah, tasfiyah, what tarbiyah? How long? Are we going to have to act upon that which you are calling to? Purifying the religion, acting upon the religion, cultivating upon the religion. Generation after generation, like Sheikh Al-Bani said, that this will take many, many years. They said, how long? He said, this question is not permissible. For indeed, when the Nasr of Allah comes, it will come to those types of people. 800 years. That's why the Messenger of Allah and the ulama, they oft quote that hadith of Khabbab ibn Arat. When the Muslims were being tortured in Mecca. They were being tortured, they were being killed and boycotted. Living in poverty. So Khabbab ibn Arat asked the messenger of Allah and he described some affairs. At the end of the hadith, what did the messenger say? The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said that indeed this religion, it will overcome, it will be established. So much so that a man will travel. From Hadramaut to Sana'a in Yemen. And he will not fear except for Allah and the wolf upon his sheep. But yet you, you are a people who are impatient. You are hasty people. Musta'ajileen. That they are people who have isti'jal. So the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is cultivating them. Be patient. Persevere. Stick to tawheed. Trust in Allah. Have tawakkul. Take the asbab, take the means. And those means, my brothers and sisters, are only found in the kitab and the sunnah. With the understanding of the sahaba radiallahu anhum. The means of rectification. 800 years later, after that hadith, Constantinople gets conquered. Then look what Shaykh al-Bani said. And as for the second conquest, then that will necessarily also take place by Allah's permission. And that will come to pass. Why? Because our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is truthful. As-sadiq al-musduq. He is the truthful and he is the believed. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he said that a certain event will take place, it will take place. Whether it's 800 years or 1,000 years or 2,000 years, it will take place. And there is also no doubt that to actualize the second conquest would necessitate a return to the rightly guided Khilafah. This term that is now bandied around. Khilafah, Khilafah. And those devils in Iraq and Syria now who claim that they've established a Khilafah. And their counterparts in Libya who have now established a second Khilafah. Allahu A'lam where the third one's going to be. And then the fourth one and the fifth one, each of them claiming that they have the Khilafah. And he's the Amir al-Mu'mineen sending their armies against each other to slaughter and kill Muslims. That is not the Khilafah. That is not what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is referring to here. The Messenger of Allah, look what image they give to the Khilafah. Even the Muslim when he hears the word Khilafah, the Caliphate, he begins to get, he feels a tightness in his chest. Why? Because even the Muslim now in his head, when he thinks about Khilafah, he thinks about ISIS and they're murdering and killing. 
and their corruption and their facade. But their khilafah upon the manhaj of Nabuwa is Abu Bakr and Umar, justice and truthfulness and tawheed and giving the people their rights, not being unjust, not like what they do. Those corrupt individuals who are sending the youth to their deaths by killing other Muslims. This is not the khilafah upon the manhaj of Nabuwa. Even if they call it khilafah morning, now, morning, noon and night, it is not the khilafah. And what they have is not a dola Islamiyah. It is a dola based upon fasad. Even if you want to call it a dola, it's not even a dola. It is not recognized by Ahlul Ilm, no the scholars. No Ahlul Halli wal Aqt. They don't recognize it. But look what Shaykh al-Albani mentions here. That the second, that this victory and this victory after victory of Islam will come at the hands of a khilafah that will return. And then he mentions that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Prophet would remain amongst you for as long as Allah wills. Then Allah will raise it up as he wills. Then there will be a khilafah upon the manhaj of Nabuwa, upon the methodology of prophethood. And it will remain for as long as Allah wills. Then Allah will raise it as He wills. Then there will be a biting kingship. And it will remain for as long as Allah wills. Then Allah will raise it up as Allah wills. Then there will be a tyrannical kingship. And it will remain for as long as Allah wills. And then Allah will raise it as He wills. Then there will be a khilafah that will return upon the manhaj of Nabuwa. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained silent. Of course, this hadith is authentic, as Shaykh al-Albani has mentioned, from the Muslims of Imam Ahmed. So what do we have? We had the messengership. Then we had the khulafa al-Rashidin, we had the khilafah. Then we had the righteous kings. Then they became, then they came tyranny. And that continued in forms up until the time that we live in. Sometimes better, sometimes worse. Then there will be a return to the manhaj of Nabuwa. Then Shaykh al-Albani mentions, Rahimahullah ta'ala, then that is to come. That is to come. And that is from the glad tidings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that the khilaf, the hadith in Abu Dawood, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that the khilaf will remain in my ummah for 30 years. Then there will be kingship. Then there will be a tyrannical kingship. Then they will return the khilafah upon the, khilafa upon the manhaj of Nabuwa, upon the methodology of prophethood. Not what you see today. Not what you see what these people are claiming. The claims are worthless. Don't believe the claims. Just because they claim we have the Amir al-Mu'mineen and anyone who does not give him the bayah, then he's a kafir. That in and of itself tells you that these people are not upon the manhaj of Nabuwa. Whoever does not make hijrah to him, whoever does not come to this Baghdadi, calls himself Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. He says, I am the Amir al-Mu'mineen, and I am the Khalifa, and I have the Khilafa. They say, if you don't give him the bay'ah, then you're a kafir. And whoever opposes him, and whoever does not agree with him, and if they don't put up his flag anywhere, then he's a kafir and he's worthy of being killed. This is the Khilafa upon the manhaj of Nabuwa. The one who utters la ilaha illallah to put a bullet in his head. Even if a mushrik in the heat of battle, when your sword is lifted and you're about to strike him because he's from the enemies and he utters the word la ilaha illallah, your sword is not allowed to come down upon his neck. As the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said to Usama bin Zaid, he said to him, the man said la ilaha illallah and you killed him. He said, Ya Rasulullah, he only said it to be saved from the sword. He said, and you pierced his heart? Where is that manhaj? Where is that justice that was established in the time of the Prophet ﷺ today? But the future is for Islam. It will come, but it will come upon the methodology of Muhammad ﷺ. Islam will become manifest. That's why Shaykh al-Albani when he mentioned that narration that there will not come a time except that the time that comes after is worse than the time that comes before. He said of course there may come a time that is better than the time that came before. He said for example when the Mahdi comes 
And Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam, he descends. That will be better than the time that was before it. He said, and the, and the tidings of this hadith are beginning to be seen. He mentions not only that, but even as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith collected by Imam Muslim, that the hour will not be established up until the land of the Arabs, it returns to green pastures and rivers. Shaykh al-Albani said, this is not just a victory in terms of Muslims becoming strong physically, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make their land green. The Arabian Peninsula, that is a desert. It will become green pastures and rivers. Shaykh al-Albani said, rahimahullah ta'ala, and, the, and this hadith itself, we are beginning to see it. That Allah will give them victory economically in their pasture, in their farming, in their cultivation, in every affair. So we do not despair, barakallahu feekum. He said that when, Shaykh al-Albani, he said that we used to hear, when we were younger, we used to read in the newspapers that there is a river that flows through the Arabian Peninsula. He said, Allahu A'lam, that this river may come and may come to the surface. And this may be from the manifestation or from the from that prophesied hadith of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Arabian Peninsula will return back to green pastures and to rivers. And right at the end, Shaykh al-Bani makes the point, so do not despair, for indeed the future is for Islam. But the way that you establish that future for Islam is not through bid'ah, not through shirk, not following the paths of misguidance, not through the paths of Sufiyah or the Shia, or the Khawarij, or the Jihadists and the Takfiris, or Ikhwan al-Muflisin, or Jamaat al-Tabliq. But the da'wah, that future that is for Islam, is established by way of the Kitab and the Sunnah, upon the manhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah. This is how that future is established, Barakallahu Feekum. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, wa jazakumullahu khairan.